Hello everyone. Thank you very much for being here and joining me on this channel, Adults ESL Online Learning. I'm Dr. Hernanda Smith and this, uh, this video is about the documentary White Hot, The Rise and Fall of Abercrombie and Fitch. This documentary shows how in the early 2000s, Abercrombie and Fitch was the standard image of the all-American young adult. Abercrombie and Fitch advertisements influenced teenagers and young adults to buy their lifestyle slash fashion brand because all the cool kids wore Abercrombie and Fitch. There was also some background history about the shopping mall added for context in American pop culture. The true testimonials from prior employees made the story worth watching because some of the former employees sued Abercrombie and Fitch for racial discrimination and some recounted sexual harassment. Also people started to boycott Abercrombie and Fitch because of its racially offensive t-shirts and exclusionary rhetoric. Basically, this documentary explored Abercrombie and Fitch's pop culture reign in the early 2000s and how it thrived on exclusion with former Abercrombie and Fitch employees' testimonials of their experiences. Let me know what you think and leave a comment in the comment section. This is my question after watching the documentary. What brand did you aspire to wear or own growing up? I grew up in the 80s and in the 90s, and the brand Guess was very popular with kids that, that went to school um, with me or with the kids that I went to high school with and, and uh, middle school. Um, it was, Guess was the brand that all the cool girls wore and um, the guys would wear them too, um, especially um, the guys would wear the green uh, triangle and the girls had a red little triangle. Um, on the back of the denim jeans um, from Guess. Their logo uh, would be, uh, like a logo patch would be sewn um, on the back pocket of the jeans. And the guys had a green triangle and the girls had a red one. And I, I believe the jeans probably cost around 60 bucks, 80 bucks or $90. Um, they were, ex they were very expensive for, um, a, just a, a teenager to wear and, um, needless to say, I didn't, I didn't, I don't think I owned a pair of guest jeans until I was, um, working myself, but, um, I did relate to this documentary a lot, um, in many ways because, um, I grew up going to the mall and the, the American mall was a place where, um, in the 1980s and in the 1980s and the nineties where kids would go and hang out. Um, may, sometimes all day and until closing, um, kids worked at the mall and it was relative, it would, it was relatively safe because, um, it was well lit. There was a lot of people and your friends would be there. Um, it would, there would be security. Uh, and you could make money, you could hang out, you could have fun. The food court was always a lot of fun to go to. It was a treat. The movies were there. Um, the American mall was just a place for, uh, preteens and teens to, to go and, um, spend money and spend their time. And Abercrombie and Fitch was a store in those malls, American malls. And kids wanted to 
work there. They wanted to buy their clothes because the image was if you were cool, you worked here. And if you were cool, you wore Abercrombie and Fitch, at least in the 2000s. And the documentary explores the mall culture and it explores teenagers and um, and American teenagers and um, what their values are and, and how to get them to go into your store and spend money. And we learn about the owner, um, I believe his name is um, something Jeffries, and and how he um, he was a genius in regards to being a business person and selling this brand or making this um, making Abercrombie and Fitch the like iconic. Uh, in 2000s but it also shows his dark side and how he was very exclusionary and um basically not very safe to be around in regards to uh, he just had a lot of secrets very private and he he hurt a lot of people um he made a when I say he hurt a lot of people, he hurt uh, kids who um, would never, who would never be able to afford Abercrombie, or who would never be able to work at Abercrombie and Fitch, or would never be, and um, or or yeah, they they were excluded from Abercrombie and Fitch, and that's not right. And so there was a boycott. And that boycott had started in the 2000s, like, um, like I believe in the documentary, it said like 2005 or it was bad. And because of the lawsuits of um, being racially discriminated against, and then they had these t-shirts that were really racially offensive with some racist sayings on them. And basically the public just got fed up with it and associated with Abercrombie and Fitch with uh, bullying and being toxic. And um, that led to it just falling apart. But it is a fascinating um, topic because it explores pop culture and it's just a a short amount of time. Um, like I said, it was in the documentary, it says late, ni- late 1990s and early 2000s. Well, mostly it was, I remember 2000s is when Abercrombie and Fitch really took off, um, at least in my hometown. And my sister worked at Abercrombie and Fitch and um, she remembers uh, she did, she saw the documentary and she remembers, um, the, what they were, what the former employees were, were talking about, about their meetings and how they were encouraged to recruit, to go out and recruit people to work at Abercrombie and Fitch if they, um, looked like the image that, um, Abercrombie and Fitch was promoting. And my sister only had good things to say about working Abercrombie, at Abercrombie and Fitch. Um, she did have some uh, memories of just working a lot and being stressed out, but she had a, she made really good friends, and um, she just said she really enjoyed her store, working at the store. So, um, I thought I would watch this documentary because I knew my sister worked at Abercrombie and Fitch and, uh, I wanted to watch it and then ask her about her opinion about it. And, um, 
it was really fascinating, um, a fascinating look in uh, mall culture and specifically um, this this one store that became um, iconic. It just blew up in the United States um, in the early 2000s. So um, if you liked this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to hear more content like this, click the subscribe button and the notification bell. So, be, so you can be notified when more videos are um, uploaded. But yeah, what was the brand that you aspired to wear or own growing up? For me, it was the brand Guess, and that was in the 80s and the 90s. I am a little too old to um, be part of the generation that aspired to wear Abercrombie & Fitch, but I can relate to the mall culture and the, uh, the wanting to fit in in high school by wearing a certain brand. Um, I hope, I hope you like this video, like I said, and, um, I'll see you in the next video. I hope you have a great day and bye-bye.